He's the one that gives you that final step because he is the doer of all things. It passes above will to the understanding behind the will, which is God's great consciousness and love itself. That's why all things must be followed. All things of a metaphysical nature or a prayer nature of prayer must be followed by a submission to God's will. That's not cowardice. That's not that. That's full understanding, and if you do that, you are truly wise if you submit to God's will. That's why Jesus said, who can add one cubit to his statue? Who can make a cell of the body? God is the doer. We must understand that and submit willingly. Then you will see his hand guiding you in everything, in every action. And one more reference at this time from Master's little book, Law of Success. Divine will has no boundaries. It works through laws known and unknown, natural and seemingly miraculous. It can change the course of destiny, wake the dead, cast mountains into the sea, and create new solar systems. That's what God did when he created this universe and this, all the universes. He used his will. If we unite with that will, then we also can be powerful according to his will. Man, as an image of God, possesses within him that all-accomplishing power of will. But it's wonderful to realize that, that God is the sole doer in all things. That takes it out of the realm of probability. He is the one. Unite with him. He who has such wisdom which we cannot comprehend, and we do not even dedicate and submit ourselves to him who has made all things. It's foolish, isn't it, when you face the truth? But these are facts. Another point I bring up at, at this time is do not be concerned with what others are doing or have done. We spend too much time listening to what others are, are doing. I have done. What have you done? What have I done? That's the point. Each one of us is God's particular child and has a particular job to do. That's what we should be intent on and bent upon understanding. What our job is, what we are to do for God and that we take him with us in every action. We are safe if we remember. Whatever you do, do to please God. Whatever you do, do to please him. It will not make any difference if someone sees heaven ten times over. What of it? If you don't see it, what good does it do you? It's what you see. It's what you know that really amounts to something. So I ask the Lord to take care of you. That's the easiest way. I used to be interested in all these things. I asked and said, what's the matter with you anyway? Why don't you pray, God, reveal thyself and let it go at that? So I've been doing that ever since. Father, reveal thyself is the greatest prayer. A little vision is what? Compared to God's protection and conscious protection and understanding within yourself. There's no comparison. Let us live victoriously with God, then we can amount to something and understand things. And so whatever you are doing, are you being victorious in understanding the goal of life and gaining it? What is it? Uniting your consciousness with God's consciousness, that's all. Uniting your consciousness with his love, that's all. God is love. He who loveth not is not of God. We want to live victoriously, let us understand, and then follow the scriptures until we reach the goal of life. All's well that ends well, as I have said. Never mind, you've seemingly made a mess of life, what of it? God is right there waiting now. Submit to him. You will feel him in you. All's well that ends do not look to the future right now. Right now, while you have your consciousness intact and your ability to unite your consciousness with God, do it. Do it. Do it tonight in meditation. If you cannot do it right at this moment, just feel his presence. That's all. It's so simple. The humble shall know God. The pure in heart shall know God. The simple 
Children shall know God. Suffer the little ones to come unto me. That's what God is. If we can do that, we will live victoriously. And finally, in closing, let us not forget. He can only be called a victor who has attained victory not only in the physical and mental planes, but in the spiritual plane. That's the greatest thing. As I said, if we lay up things which death is going to wipe away from us, that's not being victorious in anything. But if, on the other hand, we give a little time every day to meditation, and do not forget God, that's all. He doesn't want too much from us, but one thing he will not stand, and that is to forget him, because he's the doer, he's the giver. Do not forget the giver of all things. And if we do that, his joy and peace and bliss in our soul will be dynamic to our consciousness, and we will live victoriously. As one great saint said, he who knows, feels God's love, has life eternal. Isn't that victoriously living? He who does not know God's love will be in death eternal. Well, there you have your answer. It's up to each one of us not to sleep anymore, but to wake up and realize our oneness with God. In so doing, we will have the greatest victory because God is all. God is all. Now I'll close with reading from Master's uh, little book, Law of Success. When you convince